Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. In this video, it's video number two of the top ten cookeries. In this particular one, we're going to be talking about the top ten cookeries built in Nepal, hand-built by the commies there. The last video that we did was the top ten of production cookeries. And I do have to make a little correction on one of the uh, blades that I actually... Uh, gave them the wrong builder or wrong uh, 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 company that was making it. And that's with uh, this particular cookery here. Uh, this one is not made by Columbia Rivers. So for any of you that watch my video and you're actually going to Amazon and doing Columbia Rivers and you're wondering why the Columbia Rivers cookery doesn't look anything like this one, um, is because it's not Columbia Rivers. It's made by Condor Tools and Knives, and Joe Flowers is one of their chief designers there who designed this particular cookery along with the heavy-duty cookery. That's also uh, Condor Knife and Tools, and they make outstanding, excellent knives and, uh, and machetes in particular. Uh, but I wanted to clarify that for and erase that or eradicate that uh, confusion. Um, I don't know what was going on with me. I had a, a, a brain fart and, and uh, ended up calling them Columbia Rivers. I guess because I wish I had a Columbia Rivers to have tested to allow that to be uh, evaluated among us or not, you know, uh, eliminated or actually part of the top ten. Um, from what I've seen in the videos, it looks like it's a very good cookery uh, type of um, uh, knife that is being produced by Columbia Rivers. This one, Condor Tools and Knives, designed by Joe Flowers. Um, excellent cookery in many facets, other than a lot of the weights in the handle. So the balance is uh, a little off there. But otherwise, very good choice if you're wishing to add either one of these you got to remember, the guy who uh, competed in alone used this cookery and was able to win with it. And uh, when he did come, come back and spoke to uh, um, Condor Knife and Tools, Joe Flowers in particular, he gave him some su design suggestions on how to improve it. And this is what they came up with together and did. So very, very good uh, choices and very competent cookeries. And then, last but not least, of uh, another correction I need to make is that I mentioned that they, uh, you can upgrade the handle on the BK Becker Hank Reinhardt cookery uh, with Kydex. And no, Kydex is not a material that you want to use for handles. It's good for, for scabbards. Uh, what I was uh, referring to was uh, upgrading it with micarta scales, which... K-Bar and BK Becker provides either on their website or you can also purchase it on Amazon. And that'll be about $50 to $60. Um, plus, you can also find uh, aftermarket makers who will make a Kydex sheath for the K-Bar uh, cookery. Uh, um, I'm sorry, the Hank Reinhardt cookery uh, produced by BK Becker. And so, uh, this this blade originally come, uh, sells for about $130 in that price range around on, on uh, Amazon. And then when you add the, the different scale, handle scales and the Kydex scabbard, you're talking about uh, $120 extra added onto this. So you're talking about a $260 knife when you're done, when you're finished with it. So uh, it could be very well worth it because this is a very high quality, excellent cookery. And with all those upgrades, it would be probably one of your main tools that you would carry with you as a hunter or a backpacker or um, using it as a survival tool in your kit. So not a bad choice and, and not bad to upgrade. I haven't done it yet. Um, you just have to put more money into other cookeries and to add... Uh, or in in building my uh, the cookeries that go into our website, but one of these days I am going to upgrade that. And when I do, I'll do a video on it. So enough said about that. I don't want to take up this video's time uh, with just talking about those, but I had I felt I needed to correct that 
for those of you who are watching. And if you haven't seen that video yet, and you're um, coming in, and this is the first of that series, this is going to be uh, a three video series of the top 10 production cookeries and the top 10 handmade cookeries from Nepal. And then the final video, which will be my own personal top 10 pick uh, from all of the cookeries I have. Um, but it'll be based, you know, there'll be cookeries off of these lists, but I'll show which ones I would choose for myself. And so it'll be highly subjective on that one. Um, but this one, uh, what we're doing is we're making the judgment based upon a criteria that I put together to grade these. Um, for the handmade cookeries, it was really a lot more difficult than it was for production. Number one, I, I have more than 10 production cookeries, but I don't have nearly the amount of um, production cookeries as I do with handmade cookeries. And there's a lot of different handmade cookery houses that are producing some excellent quality cookeries. I had about 20, 25 cookeries out on my bed, or actually on a table, and I was looking at them, I was testing them to re-familiarize myself with them and how they functioned and used what I liked and what I didn't like. And then I went through my criteria and I graded them, and these are the ones that ended up on this table, these 10. So the other ones are very, very good, and they're very close. Even the ones on the, ten, the of my 10 list here, there were a lot of ties, so I had to do some tiebreakers. What is the criteria that I judged these cookeries and the production cookeries is this. Number one will be weight. Number two, size. Number three, materials. You know, the steel, the handle materials, the, the scabbard materials, and any accessories that may come with it. And uh, when you get handmade cookeries, you do come, they do come with accessories. Comfort of use, how, how comfortable it is, that's number four. Number five, performance. Number six, eye appeal. You know, it, some of these are almost too pretty to want to take out and use in the field. And yet, if you uh, don't give them the opportunity to prove themselves out in the field, you won't really know how, what a great cookery they are, and they'll still look pretty doing it. Uh, Carry system, how functional or how good is the carry system? Strength and durability, uh, is it going to be something that you're going to constantly have to baby and maintenance, or is it something that's going to be pretty maintenance-free? Um, balance, I have my balancing tool here, which is my nail, and yes, this is the point of the nail, not just, an, um, I'm not putting it on the back end of the nail. Proof of it is, if you watch, pierce right through the paper. So there's the hole. So we're talking about a nail, the nail point. These can balance on that, and it will show how good of a balance they are. Um, number 10 is the three Fs, which is form follows function or philosophy of use. When the designer sat down at the table and designed these and then built them and then took them out on the field, do they do what the designer intended them to do? How well do they do it? Sharpness is number 11, and then number 12 is price. And all of these are going to be you know, a bit more than what you would pay for some of the production cookeries. Let's say the 60% of the uh, uh, production cookeries, you could uh, purchase them under $100. You know, they'll go from 70 on down 50 to 30 and I think the cheapest one was like 26 bucks. So... You know, those are more budget friendly, um, where if you have 100 to $200 that you would want to invest in a really good quality knife, then you're going to be looking at these cookeries that are handmade from Nepal. Um, I, there are cookeries that are sold for less, but they're not going to be, some of them will be to this standard. There are some that will, definitely, especially when you get into some of the reproduction BSIs. They are built to this level and yet you could get some of them for under $100. But uh, the ones that are in this list, um, all of them are over $100 but under $200. So um, stay tuned and we'll get right into it. Um, now, like I said, this was really tough to go over all the different um, 
cookeries that I had and to come up with 10. So these 10 are outstanding cookeries in their own right. The uh, number 10 that came on the list, number 10, was produced by Great Gurkha's Cookery. Uh, Perna Darnell is the uh, owner of that website and that storefront, and he is also the chief commie that does the designing and building of these cookeries. Um, I'm not sure if he has a, a separate sharky who does the scabbers or if he does it himself, but all in all, outstanding package and very well done. This was number 10. The weight on it is uh, 590 grams. Um, what I bought this maybe about two years ago, and I went to his website, and surprisingly enough, it's still being offered at the same price in which I purchased it two years ago for $119. This is probably one of the uh, most, um, uh, for the, the, the bang for the buck, I mean, this really is worth every penny of that $119. Now, it has, it, overall length is 20 uh, inches, and it is very well balanced. It's a, it would be a good martial arts uh, uh, cookery. I've done some forms with it and test cutting with it, and it's fun to use. But it also would be very uh, excellent if you were taking it as a hunter to cut a fire lane or to build a, um, a blind. This would be a great tool to do that with. And uh, it's light enough in the hand where it, it helped in its lowering the score was this has a traditional ring, which is very important and very good for the traditional cookery. And uh, with that, when you're holding it, you can find good placement of your fingers. You know where your hand is. And when you need to choke up and, and still get locked in with that ring to keep your hand from sliding towards the cutting edge, uh, you can easily find that ring. The only thing is that it's a little bit too aggressive. If it was just a little bit uh, smaller, uh, it would be more comfortable in the hand when you're doing strikes. Uh, because you can, it, the reverberation kind of comes back and, and gets you with that ring. That's the only downside of it. Otherwise, it's a very comfortable, very useful, and very uh, well-balanced cookery. Now, in this um, particular video, it might be a little bit longer than some because I'm going to try to demonstrate these cookeries on how well-balanced they are by balancing them on this, um, this nail head. And here you go. This is this cookery is very, very well balanced. As you can see, it's rocking a bit, doing a little bit of a dance for you, and showing how well balanced it is. It's outstanding. I'm going to hold this blank piece of paper so you can see it uh, a little bit easier. Um, very well balanced for such a large uh, knife. You know, I. I don't think you could ever find a machete this size that's that well balanced. Outstanding. Slides in and out of the scabbard very easily, very comfortably, without any uh, challenges. And that's very important because you're not always going to get that with some cookeries and some commies. It comes with uh, good accessories, which you have your carda and your chakmak. Chakmak is used for uh, taking rolled edges out. You can use it for striking against a river rock to make sparks or a, a ferro rod. Um, the utility knife, which is the Carta, um, some of the more budget-friendly handmade cookeries uh, you know, that are made, they will not use the same steel that they use for the larger knives. And this is a big mistake. They'll use an inferior steel that will not hold a temper well often just, uh, they know it's going to be a throwaway. It's just to, for looks to be in the scabbard. These, every single cookery on this table that um, has an accessory like this, all the accessories are 100% functional. So this one is a little bit more on the smaller size, but yet 100% functional, excellent grind, good steel, and it is sharp as a scalpel. So uh, very useful. Um, addition to this kit. Uh, that was number 10. Number 9 is a cookery that's exclusively offered on my website. It is built by Roger Borelli. 
Um, it is actually patterned after uh, one of the cookeries that's in my collection of an antique cookery. And uh, he did a masterful job in reproducing it. Uh, this one has a little bit more of a belly to it than the normal or usual traditional serapati, yet it's still of a serapati length and style. It is, uh, this particular one is 20 inches, same length as the other one overall, and uh, very well balanced, as you will see. This one uh, balances excellent. It has a hollow forged blade. There you have it. It's uh, dancing a little bit there. And uh, very, very well balanced cookery. Uh, very comfortable in the hand. Again, the ring is not too prominent to where it's going to create hot spots, yet you're going to have good dexterity and know where your hands are when you're choking up or choking back on it. Uh, you know, I have s relatively small hands, more like a, you know, Nipples person would have. And so choking back for me is not painful, but for somebody with larger uh, grips, uh, this might be a little bit on the pointed side. And if so, uh, you know, we're probably going to fix that in future runs of this where we're going to round that out a little bit more. But otherwise, very comfortable, very useful, and it rated number nine. And it too comes with very functional um, uh, accessories as a chalk muck, tender pouch, for keeping your dry, your tender t dry, and carrying it with you in your knife, and this one has a what would be almost a full EDC size knife as your secondary knife. This is designed to be used, so it's uh, very good, very comfortable. Um, has a, a stick tang, and it is peened with a um, with a pommel, metal pommel. Very well built, very excellent, and that's number nine. The weight on this one is 555 grams. It's actually lighter than the Mala, which was um, which was number 10, which came in at 590. Price point. This one, as you uh, may have noticed, excuse me, sorry, I almost dropped the scabbard there. Is this one has ancient uh, text written in it in Sanskrit from some of the holy uh, literature in um, in Hinduism. And it has very beautiful meaning on it. We, we offer that uh, with an extra $15 charge because it's quite labor intensive to do. And, um, but otherwise, this would sell for $150 bucks without it, without the, uh, the text on the side. All right, number eight is um, kind of surprising to me that it was ended up at number eight. I've, normally would have put this much higher if it was just me. But it, I scored it, and so where it scored on this, it sc comes in at number eight, and that's Tora's Havildar Cookery uh, by Tora Blades. This is a beautiful, fantastic cookery. It's one of those cookeries that's almost too beautiful to, to use. Um, hollow Forge, very well balanced, as I'm going to demonstrate for you here uh, by placing it on the tip of this, this uh, nail here, if I can get it to to balance. I'm probably slicing pieces of steel off right now of that nail. Try to get it. And almost there. There we go. As it's uh, dancing there for you. Uh, beautifully well made. Um, gorgeous horn handle. Um, you know, it's, it's a really fantastic cookery, and, um, and that one came in at number eight. Uh, it is probably one of the more higher priced ones, um, and it's still being offered on their website, so you can, you can get it. There's a bit of a long wait on this. I, I almost waited, I think, a year for this, uh, but it was worth the wait because it's such a fantastic cookery. Comes in at 569 grams, and the price for it off their website is $175.48. So, a very beautifully, very well made cookery. Um, comes with a, a functional carta and chuck muck. This is the carta, has a scanty grind, very pointed, um, great for doing uh, bow, bow drill divots to get those started if you were doing a uh, dry 
you know, a friction heat uh, fire. But very well done. Okay, number seven is Baroon Borelli's uh, from Cotang. Uh, I, I believe it's Cotang Kukri Handy Crafts. And uh, Baroon also makes some cookies for my website that are offered on his website as well or off of his, from his uh, storefront in Nepal. And this is, I asked him what was one of his favorites and this was the one that he told me. He actually came up with the original design when he was employed by another Kami and uh, um, cookery house. And then he, when he opened up his own, uh, he carried his design because it is his design and he polished it and made it look really just fantastic. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this ain't broke, but what he did do is he uh, upgraded it with a full tang. So this is what's called a pan wall. And uh, he used horn handle um, and, and, and with steel fittings. And uh, very, very, very excellent cookery. Now this one is one of the heavier cookeries. It comes in at 645 grams. Uh, on my website and on his website, it sells for $140, and um, and it is a very, very well-balanced cookery, which I'm going to demonstrate here, hopefully. And uh, it actually, the balance point is closer to that finger choil that you see there. Just almost have it right there. Oh, a little bit, a little bit too forward. There we go. Very well balanced cookery for a full tank. And uh, as you can see, it um, as I can get it to dance a little bit for you, very, very well balanced, very excellent. One thing I really appreciate about uh, Baroon Borelli is his ability and creativity that he does with the, the chiras. He makes real chiras in the blade that are functional. So they, they don't just look beautiful, and he does a great job in placing them in the right place. Um, but it's just, they, they're functional, but they're beautiful. He's just very, very talented. 90 degree spine you could throw a spark on. Uh, finger choil, so you could get in there and do your whittling right at the balance point so you don't feel the weight of this blade coming at you in any way. You have good control. So just an excellent, well-designed, well-made cookery, um, especially as a pan wall. Um, it was one that tied with another, and that what I... What caused me to, to you know, bring it down in its um, um, evaluation was that, you know, when you purchase uh, cookeries from Nepal, the wood and the horn or the bone uh, doesn't get treated with anything. It's it's pretty much um, as it is. They'll put a high polish on it and, and dress it up, look real nice, but you're still gonna because it's not uh, treated with anything. Coming from Nepal in the, in the Himalayas down to the desert where I live in California, you know, you're going to get some shrinkage of material. So there's a little bit of the steel tang that shows up um, that you can feel. It doesn't create any hot spots. It's not really uncomfortable, but it's notable. And so that's what kind of lowered it in the scoring because I had to break a tie. Um, it comes with a very functional carta. And chakmak, the card has got a nice scanty grind on it, and it's very sharp, um, a little bit on the thick side, which means this is a durable little knife, fits in the hand well. It's not like a, a small little tinker toy that you're going to throw away. It's 100% functional. Great, great uh, knife, and that came in at number seven. Number six was actually a collaborated design with myself and Neem Tanji with Gurkha Blades. And uh, he uh, made this for me, built it for me to include on my website. It's based off of uh, three cookery of what I uh, lean towards thinking it's uh, the beginning stages of the Mark Ones. Uh, in that it's a pattern that you see frequently used with the cookeries that were used roughly around the time of World War I and um, it may even go further back to um, the Victorian era. But it's a, a prominent design with this particular style of, of cowdy. So we put together one. Uh, we make it with a 
cap tang and a full stick tang. This one has a full stick tang with a keeper on it. Very well balanced cookery, as I'm going to demonstrate as well. There we go. Hey, I, first time, what do you know? <laughs> uh, so you can see that that one is very well balanced. Uh, its weight is at 580 grams and sells for $140 on my website. And it's called the um, uh, Gallipoli Battle Cookery. Um, very high quality leather scabbard made with buffalo hide. Uh, soft, nice, good feel to it. And comes with a very functional carda and chop mud. This one has a little bit higher grind. It is sharp as a scalpel down uh, drop point, or actually spear point. So you could do bow drill rivets with it. Thick enough spine to where you could uh, put some pressure behind that and not have to worry about bending or breaking the knife. Handle fits the hand really well. Excellent package. Um, very well done. Very well done. Now some cookeries have uh, the frogs where you can slide off and slide on. This is one of them that does. Uh, so you could keep the frog on your belt and slide the cookery out and put it to rest when uh, you're sitting down and then pick it up and put it back in the frog without having to take it off your belt. So excellent um, form follows function on that. All right, so that was uh, number, that one's number six. Number five is another collaborated design effort with uh, Neem Tanji, or actually with Roger Borelli and myself. Now this one is actually my design, and uh, you may think that I'm just serving myself by trying to put something I designed in this top ten list. That's not the case. It actually went through the same testing that the other ones did. Um, this is a design that I did, and if any of you are designers or artists, you will understand this statement that I'm about to make. We as artists, when we paint a painting, uh, the greatest joy is the process of creativity. Once we finish it, and it goes off to the client or it hangs on a wall somewhere, every time we look at it, it actually is almost torture because every time we see it, we're looking at all the mistakes that we made and how we could have done it better. And we take that knowledge and hopefully put that into the next painting or next design that we do. So when I got this in my hand right after uh, uh, Raju had built it, um, I at first kind of thought, oh, wow, you know, yeah, the design looks good on paper. I don't know if I did it, you know, was able to, to nail it or not. And so I was, I was a little bit, it was a love-hate kind of experience. But the more that I used this cookery, the more that I had it in my hand, the more that I was really impressed with Raju Borelli's ability to take my design and, and put it into, um, into form in a masterful way to where he really captured my intent in the design. It is very, very comfortable in the hand. It has a good palm swell here, but also on the sides. So when it fits in your hand, it won't create hot spots. And it won't fatigue the, the um, skeletal structure of your hand when using it with doing heavy blows. Not only that, the balance of this cookery is so good. It's even one of the heavier cookeries coming in at 635 grams. When you choke up on this, you're really close to the balance point of this cookery, which I'll demonstrate right now, if I can get it to stand on the, na on the nail tip here. And that will be, that was a little bit too, I think, it wasn't as good as last time where I got it right on the first time. There we go. You can see it's very, very well balanced, right where the balance should be. It has an ink chera, um, and when you hold this handle in your hand and you get closer up like this, what, it is so comfortable and it gives you such great control. It, you know, it doesn't need a finger tool to get in there and do. You can actually manipulate this cookery and do your, like I've sharpened pencils with this, and it's very easy. So very successful, um, very ergonomical. Uh, uh, friendly to the hand. Where it didn't score so good is the scabbard. The sharky who made it formed it 
perfectly with the with the handle design, which is nice and beautiful. But if you, uh, it will fall out. You know, if you shake it enough, or if you had a hard fall and it could come out, um, unless you do what you should be doing, and that is pushing it down and locking it in, then it doesn't come out at all. So when it does that, it kind of changes the design there. So that um, was its tiebreaker uh, when it was going up against another. Another nice thing is that the frog does come off, and you can put this at rest when you're sitting down, and then put it back in your frog without having to take your belt off. Um, very useful and good. So that was uh, number five. Now, and it's called the Garuda uh, Cookery, uh, which is exclusively sold on dragonflycookeryandknives.com. All right, then number four, we have um, another one that's exclusively on my site, but was a collaborated effort between Neem Tanji and myself based off of a historical Hanshi cookery that I have in my collection. And uh, we kept the blade slice exactly the same as the original shape and everything. The only difference is we extended the handle to accommodate Westerners' hands because the handle was very short. The original has an aluminum handle. We chose to do it in a horn and a wood handle. This year we're going to be coming out with the aluminum handle. Uh, fit for Westerners' hands, but this is um, this is an excellent martial arts uh, cookery in that it's very light, very fast. It's uh, its weight is 375 grams. It's sold for 135 dollars on my website. Uh, you have a choice of wood or horn or aluminum, and it'll all be in the same price. Um, now this looks like it would be a really weak cookery, but it has a quarter inch stock. Uh, uh, spine on it. This thing could take quite a punishment and uh, and be able to come through for you. It's a light to medium chopper, but it would be great for, um, it was actually designed in purpose for taking it out on the trail and backpacking, so it's very successful in that um, capacity. Neem Tanji has his signature that is um, outstanding, and that is every cookery he makes, he puts a lot of uh, beautiful embellishments like you would see with the shape and with the uh, keeper on the back of this. All of his cookeries on his website or of his that you would find on mine will have those beautiful embellishments. So he really does a great job. And um, it comes with a very functional uh, carta and, and uh, uh, chalk muck. This one is uh, kind of like a crambit. Um, in its curve, um, it has uh, an area where it's not sharpened, which will allow you to get a good purchase point and coming in doing some push cuts and uh, enough belly and good indexing to where you could get in there and do your skinning with it. It's a very, very useful tool that comes with this cookery. And uh, um, also with the Garuda, I didn't, I didn't share, but it comes with a very functional chalk muck and traditional design and a carta. And the carta is, um, again, also like that crambit. It's um, really good for martial arts practice. It would be a good secondary defense tool, but it's also a very competent um, uh, skinner as well as um, doing any other chopping or, or processing of food or whittling of uh, your tinder to get in preparation for a fire. So design all in all, very, very good. Okay, so that was number four. Number three is Kaladesh. This is the Pensioner, uh, one of my favorites that they put on their website. Um, I actually own two of these, and this one is with wood handle. The other one that I have has a horn handle. The other one has traditional uh, scabbard. This one I chose, the Kydex scabbard, and it, they did a fantastic job with that uh, Kydex scabbard. Just like it, every bit of the quality you would find here in the States of somebody making a kite scabbard for a knife custom made. This is just really fantastic. Great retention. No, uh, the, the sound that you'll hear is from the D-ring and the, uh, the belt clip. Um, there is no rattle of the blade inside this. And uh, the only thing that I would recommend for them is to put a drainage hole 
in this that if it filled up with water that the water would have a place to come out besides this slit back here. Although you get it wet, you take your, your cookery out, you turn it upside down and all the water will run right out and that kind of solves the problem there as well. Um, modern material but with a very um, traditional style blade. This is kind of like patterned after the mutiny style that uh, they also make uh, of that era. Uh, the mutiny era or the Victorian era, uh, but beautiful, elegant, well-designed blade. Now you can only get this one on their website with a 13-inch blade. It doesn't give you choices of blade length, where other cookeries on their website would allow you. Um, this one has the steel furnishings in the wood. It's a stick tang, goes all the way to the back, and is paint. Very strong, very durable, and very comfortable in the hand. Uh, this thing is just, and it's well balanced, and hopefully I can get this one to balance properly on this um, nail head here without sliding. So almost there. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> it does balance this one. I have a little bit more difficulty finding it, that one little sweet spot, but I've gotten it to, to balance and dance. So it is very well balanced. And that is number three. Um, just... You can't really go too wrong with this. Now, when I bought this, I think I paid with this Kydex maybe about $150, $170. But now that they are becoming more popular, more people know about them, the, the, their orders are coming in, and which is a good problem to have. But it's also caused them to raise their prices a little bit, maybe for the materials. Like Kydex may be not that cheap in Nepal to get. So this one would... Um, would now cost about $193, uh, just as you see with the wood handle and the kydex. Number two is put together by Kotang, uh, Cookery Handicrafts, Baroon Borelli and his team. And this is one that's being offered on their website as well as my website. And this is a fantastic, beautiful cookery almost too pretty to use. Uh, the detail work of the brass on the handle, the, the horn that they use, the chairs, like I said, you know, Baroon, he just knows how to do chairs like nobody's business. He, he knows how to place them where they're functional and where they're beautiful and elegant to look at. This cookery would be outstanding for martial arts. It's uh, light and nimble in the hand and uh, not too big, so it'd be good for trail, uh, trail use or for backpacking, it would be a great companion for that. You could definitely build shelters with it or blind, um, you know, cut a, um, be able to cut a, uh, a fire lane, um, clear your trail a bit, use it in your campsite if I can get it without sliding. You'll see that it balances extremely, extremely well. Um, it's a very, very well-balanced cookery. Very well-made. There you go. And as you can see, it'll dance for you a little bit there. Beautiful, beautiful cookery. That's number two. Weighs in at 463 grams. And this one can be purchased either on my website or on Kotang's website for $160. Outstanding cookery. And a beautiful, uh, well-made, uh, high-quality buffalo hide um, uh, scabbard with a beautiful shape. Does not come with a cart or a chuck muck. This is, uh, with this tool, that's all you need. <laughs> it's just a fantastic cookery. Now, number one, our number one choice that came in was Kaladesh Blades The Mutiny. This is a fantastic, beautiful, well made cookery and definitely deserves its place. It comes in at 517 grams as you see it. This one, um, when I ordered this one, which is um, probably about a year ago, maybe two, and uh, you had a little bit like three different blade choices as far as length goes. Now you only have two. This one I believe is about a 14 inch blade and um, it has a very beautiful chira up at the spine that really does lighten this blade and gives it excellent balance. Um, I love its slender look. It's um, this is just almost too beautiful to use. 
beautiful horn handle. And whenever you order a cookery with horn handle from Kaladesh, these guys take the time out to really select the, the horn that they put on the blade to where it has beautiful marbling. Uh, this one's just really gorgeous. Full uh, stick tang, it goes, or, or rat tail tang, it goes all the way through and is peened at the, the keeper. Um, very, very beautiful and very, very well balanced, as you will see in my final balance demonstration here of the cookeries being offered. Now, I do not sell Kaladesh blades. Uh, they're not being offered on my website. This, uh, you could go to their website to order these. There is a little bit of a wait time, probably a longer wait time than I originally had because they're getting to be very well known and well respected cookery houses as they should. They really put out excellent, outstanding quality, as all the commies that have been mentioned on this site. Great Gurkha Cookery House. I only have two of theirs. One of them ended up on this table, which really shows that's a great testament to them because as I acquire more uh, cookery from them, um, uh, Perna Darnell and I are kind of working together to see if we're gonna, he's going to let me offer some of his beautiful blades on my website and we might do some design collaborations together in the future. And if so, you know, um, I'll be happy to, to do further demonstrations of his blades as well. And, uh, and I'll be doing more top 10 lists and putting more cookeries on it as uh, new ones are coming out. So I hope you like this. Uh, please leave, like and subscribe on my YouTube channel. If you um, have any comments or questions, about any of the cookeries, you know, you can message me there or you can message me at uh, Blue Dragonfly Training Post on my Facebook page and I'll be happy to answer you there. Um, please visit my website where you can find and purchase some of these cookeries. Most of them I do not have in stock, so there will be a wait time. Um, and I must add that now that we are in the, the situation that we're in worldwide with this pandemic, um, all production of cookeries in Nepal have come to a stop. There are no cookeries being made right now because those, these guys are staying home with their families as we are staying home with our families. So once we, this virus gets past us, we'll be able to get the, the fires uh, rekindled and get the hammers pounding and be able to produce these cookeries. And that's, that's uh, going to be the case for Kaladesh blades, for Kotang, for Great Gurkha Cookery House, and for um, Torah Blades, uh, Himalayan Imports, all of them are going to have to uh, rest the anvil for a bit. So be patient with them. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers as all of us. And thank you very much for watching. And please like and subscribe. Visit my website at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. Thank you very much. God bless and namaste. Stay home, stay healthy. And, we'll, uh, and then check my next video, uh, which is going to be my list of the top 10 that's purely subjective. It's just my, my choices. Thank you very much. Namaste.